Hi again, my name is Adriana Arias and we will continue discussing voting theory. Where we last left off in the last video, um, we were focusing on plurality voting and this plurality, plurality, sorry, method where whoever has the most votes ends up winning. We also discussed majority voting, this majority method, which means if you have more than 50%, that would be a majority win. In the last example, we saw that not every plurality is a majority. So if I look at the second example, candidate A wins by plurality, but does not actually have more than 50% of the votes. So this would be a win by plurality, but it's not a majority. On the other hand, every majority ends up being a plurality. So in this first example, candidate A has the majority votes. And because this first candidate has a majority, that means that they also have the most. They have the plurality vote. So this is really important that not every plurality is a majority, like in this second example, but every majority is, in fact, a plurality. What we will continue discussing is this idea of fairness. And to help us decide whether a voting result is fair, two popular fairness criteria are the following. The majority criterion, which we said is 50% or more, and then the Condorcet criterion. This Condorcet criterion is the one that we're really going to explore in this section. And this says that in order for a candidate to win, they have to beat every other candidate in a head-to-head -head election. So your candidate has to beat everybody else if they went head-to-head. -head. Okay, so kind of like a like tournament style. So let's look at some voting assumptions. We're going to require that these two things for sure hold. This idea of transitivity. So if my choices are I want candidate A over B over C, that means by transitivity, if there was only A and C in the race, I would choose A, right? Because I chose A first before B and then over C. Now the elimination assumption says that if, again, I prefer A over B and then B over C, if one of my candidates get eliminated, like C, and it was only A and B in the race, I would still choose A. Okay, so these two assumptions um, are important for this to hold in this Condorcet criterion. So we're going to look at one example, and this is the same preference table schedule that we had in the last video, where we had the, and the alligator, baboon, cheetah, and dolphin, all candidates for this animal kingdom election. So in the last video, we said alligator was the winner by plurality. Okay? We want to know, is there a Condorcet winner? So that means we have to take these candidates and make them go head to head. Okay. So I'm going to start with candidate A and candidate B. So I'm going to just compare their results. Okay. So if I look at these first 14 voters, 14 of them chose A over B. So again, we're, we're kind of ignoring C and D. We're just focusing on A and B. So in the like first round, right, with the 14 votes, and then we're going to look at the 10 votes, the 8 votes, the 4 votes, and the 1 vote. But when A and B go head to head, 14 of those votes has A winning, right? And that's that first column that we have there. Now, if I look at the second column that shows my 10 votes, and again, assuming that we are only looking at A and B, let me cross off C and D. When I look at this, we see that B was chosen over A, right? So 10 times B in the second, in the second type of ballot, B was chosen over A. Okay, so B is going to get those 10 points. And now I'm going to do that with that third column. Okay, so the third column has eight of these votes. And again, we're only comparing A and B. So when I look at this, B was chosen over A, so B is also going to get those eight votes. I'll look at this fourth column now, and that fourth column gets four votes, or four animals voted like that. I will get rid of C and D, and again, B was chosen over A. 
So B is also getting those votes. And the very last column that I'm going to check is this single vote, that there was only one person that voted in that ranking system, or one animal, sorry. I keep saying person, one animal who voted in this ranking system. And when I only focus on B and A, B once again wins. So I am going to total up these points and it looks like A has 14 of the votes. And then when I look at B, B won 10 plus eight plus four plus one, B has 23 of the votes in this Condorcet method, which means then that B won against A. If it was a battle between just A and B, B would win. Now that we know that B is the winner of like this first round, we're now going to go and see what about if we fight, not fight, if we compare in a head-to-head -head election B versus C. So we're going to run through the same exact process. Okay, so let me get rid of all of my color coding here. And again, we have 14 animals who voted in the same ranking system, then 10, then eight, then four, and then one. And then we will see which one of these between B and C ends up with this, with the more votes if they just went head to head. So I'm gonna look again at the first column and we're just focusing on B and C. So I'm gonna get rid of A and of D. And when I look at this, B is a winner. So B is getting those first 14 votes. Now in the second column, which is worth 10 points, again, I am going to only focus on B and C. Actually, C is the winner here, right? C is chosen over B, so C is going to get those 10 points. I will now look at the third column that is worth eight of these votes, and I'm only focusing on B and C. And when I do that, B is a preferred winner, right? So B is getting those eight votes from that, from that ballot, that column. Now look at the fourth column. The fourth column is worth four points and I'm comparing just B and C. So when I eliminate A and D, once again, B is preferred over C. So B is getting those votes. And the very last one that we are going to check is this last column that is only worth one vote, okay, but still important. I'll get rid of D and A, and here C is the winner. C was preferred over B, so C is getting those, those votes. So now I'm going to add them up, and when B goes against C, B has 14 plus 8 plus 4, so B gets 26 of the votes, while C gets 11 of the votes. So when B goes against C, B also wins, right? So B is the winner when they go against candidate A. B is also the winner when they just go head to head with candidate C. So the last one that candidate B needs to check is what happens if I win against Dolphin, okay? If the baboon wins against Dolphin, that's it. That B opponent has been able to win alligator, cheetah, and dolphin. But if the dolphin wins, we're gonna go through this process all over again and compare D with everybody else. So now we're comparing B and D, and let me clear my table. I'm gonna look at each of these columns and compare. So he said the first column is worth 14 points, then 10, then eight, then four, and then one. So in the first column, when I eliminate A and C, cause I only wanna focus on B and D, we see that B again was chosen over candidate D. So B is getting those 14 votes. Now we'll look again at the second column and I'll eliminate candidate A and candidate C. And when I only leave B and D, once again, B was chosen over candidate D. Looking at the third column and getting rid of A and C, we'll see that in this purple column, D was actually preferred over B. So D, go, D gets those eight votes. In the fourth column, B wins because when I eliminate A and C, B is preferred over D. So Baboon is getting those four points. And the very last one to check the single vote in the back is that D and B, when they go head to head, Dolphin is preferred over Baboon. So they get one vote. And again, I'm going to tally all of these up, but it looks like Baboon got 14, then Baboon got 10, and then they got four. 
So baboon has 28 votes when they go against D. And then D is left with eight and one, which gives me nine. So once again, B wins. So B is our Condorcet winner. A won the plurality vote because alligator had 14 of the votes, but a lot of animals did not want alligator at all. So they made alligator their fourth choice, right? So B is a way, this Condorcet winner method is a way to figure out like, was this actually fair? Is this a, a more fair criteria? Now, really important, this Condorcet criterion is not a voting method. It's just used to determine how fair the results are when the majority criterion is not satisfied. Okay, so this is only a way to determine fairness and it's not actually a voting method.